Harry Waters. Harry, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. Um, Harry, tell us a few things about yourself. Who are you? Oh, that's a, an interesting question. Um, I am a, a teacher, an English teacher, a, a teacher trainer, uh, a content creator, um, a, a radio host, um, and a big lover of the planet. Um, I've, I've, I've also got a dog. And yeah, that's about it, really. No, I also, you know, I have a family as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's me. Pretty simple. We know you uh, from Renewable English. Can you tell us more about this? Okay, Renewable English is, I'm not going to say it's my baby, because if I say that, my, my actual daughter might be offended. Um, but it is it's certainly, it's, it's a passion project. It's something I've been working towards for a very, very long time. Um, basically, what we do is we provide free lessons to encourage the awareness of um, climate crisis but but more than that it's to empower young people to find their voices and to try and go out there and make a difference it's not just you know we need to stop using oil or you know you need to have a bamboo toothbrush it, it starts with those individual actions but what we aim to do is is empower people to go out there and, and start with collective action and work together in their communities to try and make kind of a bigger difference. And we're doing that with the medium of English. And how did this passion become alive? Oof. So I, I've always been a, an activist. I mean, I think they're called change makers now. But <laughs> I've always been an activist since the age of about four, thanks to to my parents, you know, encouraging this, like instilling this belief in. You know, doing what's right for for the world. I mean, I've got pictures of me uh, campaigning to keep a library open in my hometown. Um, we Did failed. it stay open? No, no, we failed. No, but it didn't, didn't matter because we continue to fight, and and there are other libraries that are are open uh, around the area. But you know, it it showed me that you couldn't stop, even if you fail. You know, there's, you still have to continue going. You have to keep going. So I've always been passionate about doing what's right and and I've always been passionate about the planet it's something I've, I've grown up with um, and then probably in about 2015 um, I was in one of my classes I, I would always teach about the environment and you know I'd always teach about collective action and what we can do to make a difference um, because I've, I've always been passionate about showing your students you know how to to make a difference uh, and I got my fifth grade class together and, and we all wrote a letter to the, the head teacher of the school and the parents at the school and the, the foundation at the school um, to do something about recycling and about solar panels. And the school invested in solar panels and they, they started a recycling program. And I kind of looked at it and thought, hang on a minute. This actually, this is working. You know, I'm, I'm empowering these students to, to try and make a difference. And they made a difference. So from there, I thought, this needs to be bigger. This needs to be a, a global thing. We need to be doing this with, with every student all the time, every day. This is wonderful. And how, uh, what were the students' reaction to this initiative? And uh, when they wrote, for example, the letter and with the action taken later on, how did they react? How did they feel? Uh, it, it was brilliant because, you know, these, these kids were about 10 years old. Um, and their English was was pretty good, uh, but you know I'd go in there and, and I'd always complain that you know we didn't have recycling. And there were other students who were like there were recycling bins at the front of the school for everybody to see them, but they don't actually recycle from them. So so when we we got it started and when it happened, you could just see within them that like they'd achieved something. You know they'd they'd made the adults listen, and it's something that we don't do enough to our students in general. You know, be it. You know, environmentally, but in any way, shape, or form, we don't stop to listen to our students enough, and they kind of realise that if they got together, if they made enough noise, but did it in the right way, then people would listen, and and they did. So you know, it was it was a huge achievement, and yeah, there were massive smiles and, and celebration, and and it's still in order today. You know, the school still has their recycling program and and their solar panels, so um, it felt like a massive victory at the time. You see, with the nature of the course books and the complications of pub 
publishing a book, um, usually the ideas behind environmental issues are quite outdated. What can teachers do when they deliver courses and when they have got a unit on the environment to keep it updated? It, now that is another one of the big reasons why I, I started with Renewable English, because you know, you'd get to that section in the course book and there'd be that one or two pages on how bad everything is. But it was always so distant as well. Like it would be, you know, polar bears are dying, ice caps are melting. And to a Spanish teenager, that means absolutely nothing. Absolutely. So you, you have to make it local. You have to bring it down to the kind of personal level as well and show your students what's happening in the area. You know, so not just what's in the book. Um, Things are improving with textbooks. Things are getting better, but also we have that flexibility now with the online world where you can have something in an instant. You know, obviously the first thing people should do is check out Renewable English and go on there because <laughs> all of the resources are free and you know all of the lessons that we've done have all been recorded. So, you know, you can just chuck it in your lesson. You don't have to plan anything. Um, but no, there are so many resources out there and and it's all about bringing it to the level of your students because you know even in the village that i live in in spain the environmental issues are different there to a village in the north of spain you know everything is different and and every student is affected differently so when we look at it we do have to bring it to a local level before we can go on and, and you know move it on to a bigger thing because you know, a, a nine-year-old Turkish boy is not going to be able to stop the ice caps melting on their own. It's just not going to happen. But what that Turkish boy might be able to do is help get a river cleaned up in their area or, or find their passion around them that they can really connect to. And it's all about finding that passion. And, you know, climate action is a huge umbrella. You know, we can't do everything. You know, I, I do what I can. I do my best. You know, I, I eat plant-based and I... I walk as much as I can, but you know, my car is a petrol car. It's, I can't afford an electric car. So we can't do everything. And it's all about making sure our students know that, they can connect with that, but they can find their passion and they can go out there and make a difference and, and use their voices. Because it's real, as you mentioned, and they can connect to the materials a little bit better. Exactly. Now, you mentioned uh, the crazy world of the internet. Uh, what other authentic materials or realia can teachers bring in their classrooms to help the students connect with the, the, with the topic? Oh, that's a brilliant question. I love to get my students to connect with nature in general. So whether it's, um, you know, the fact that there is a climate emergency, but just getting students to connect to nature. So even stuff like bringing in leaves and seeing how many different leaves the students can find on their way into class and, and those kind of different things and having a class plan. Like when, when I run my course, the first um, part of the course is all about get a plant for your classroom and, and having that plant there as a constant reminder just to see the beauty of nature and see how like amazing it is um, and the difference it can make is absolutely incredible. Um, but then of course, you know, you do need to show the negative side. People talk about eco anxiety as being a bad thing, but if you can harness that anxiety and, and, and turn it into action and, and turn it into agency, then you can make, you know, a big difference. So bringing in articles and things like that, about things that are happening around the world can, you know, it can really switch your students on. And you're never going to get all 30 of your students on the climate bandwagon. But if you can get five or 10, you know, you're amplifying that message and they can then spread it to their families and, you know, we can make a difference. Yes, certainly. Uh, Harry, I want to ask you this question because in this year's IETFL conference, we've heard the buzz term sustainable English and sustainable teaching a lot. What does it actually mean and what does it mean in practical terms? That is, it's another wonderful question. Um, it has become a bit of a buzzword. Um, because to be sustainable isn't necessarily about the environment. It's just about not using too much of one thing so it can continue to regenerate. So it's it has become a bit of a buzzword. Um, the way I see it and the way I try and, and teach is is in a way that what the way we're learning English, the way we're teaching English, obviously that is sustainable because you're in a classroom, you know, and people are coming to your classrooms. But to try and use the idea of not taking too much away 
within our teaching. So um, to teach about whatever topic you're teaching about. So let's say we're talking about sport. Everything, there's always sport. So to talk about how sport can be more eco-friendly, you know, I'm not going to say sustainable necessarily, but how it can be more eco-friendly and, you know, how the climate affects sport and how sport can affect the climate. So trying to get it involved in, in every single part of ELT. And, and that's the beauty of ELT, that it's not like other education systems. It's not, you know, stuck with the chains of, national curriculums where you have to teach this and by the end of it you have to do this exam we've got this freedom and and we've got this reach that goes across the entire planet so being able to teach every subject we approach with this kind of sustainable view um and teaching it in a way that you know we're talking about clothes okay let's look at how these are affected you know, even business meetings and conferences you know looking at how they can be done in a more sustainable fashion. Absolutely. And you delivered the presentation yesterday. At no, no, today, today. Oh, it is today. It's oh, today, it's today. Oh, Don't worry. <laughs> um, so what is your presentation on? Uh, it's all about um, creating a respect for sustainability that sticks. You know, rather than one of the big issues I have with, with people that I, with teachers that I train and, and, um, and classes as well, that there's always this fear that, there isn't enough time or, you know, how can we teach it in a way that students are going to care about it? And it's that thing of doing it often. You know, it doesn't have to be throw everything out the window. Today's about the planet. In fact, it shouldn't be about that, you know, because then it just becomes this one subject that you then move on to something else. So it's all about getting it involved and, and having it as part of, our general day-to-day -day classes, you know, making sure that there's always a focus on the planet, you know, there's always a focus on on equality, there's always a focus on all these social justice issues that that need to be talked about, but they don't necessarily have to be the only focus of the class. We don't have to say we're throwing out the books and we're doing environment projects. You know, we should do environment projects, obviously, but it needs to be something that's, you know, on a daily basis. You know, if you're going to exercise, you don't go to the gym once a week for six hours, do you? No, you do a little bit every day. It's the same with yoga. You don't do it once a week. You do a little bit every day. So let's do the same with the planet. Wonderful. And how has the conference been for you so far? I've, I've loved it. I mean, I only managed to get here yesterday quite late because of, of delays and, and, and stuff like that. But it's just been so nice. Now, I've been able to like touch people like, it's been so weird i've been going up to people like who who I, who I feel like i know you know these are people i've been speaking to for two three years and yeah. and i've never seen them before so and without the face mask exactly without the face mask and that that connection is something that i've really missed and just being able to show people pictures of my dog um and just talk about nothing and everything and it's just been amazing to finally to be able to connect with people and see people that you know I've I've not seen in the flesh. That is true. And I have got one final not question but challenge for you. Oh okay. Can you describe Ayatefo in three words? No swear words, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> they would only be good swear words, don't worry. Um, I can't just say really, really good. That wouldn't sound like an English teacher. Um, I mean, it is three words. It is, really it good. is three words, yeah. Um, I'm going to go with back to normal. Because it's, yeah, because it feels like it's back to normal. You know, Absolutely. It's, it's just so nice like, I, I love the advantages of online I know the the environmental benefits of, of online as well um, but the fact that I can connect with people is just it's, it's exceptional lovely Harry thank you very much for joining us today good luck with your presentation and good luck with this wonderful cause that you're fighting for thank you very much thank you so much it's been a